Yeah. Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance, where I show you how to make the most likely repairs you'll need to make in your lifetime. If you'd like to get the latest videos, subscribe, and then hit the little bell icon right at the subscribe button, and it'll notify you of any new videos when they're released for you. Well, Palm Springs on a humid, overcast day, expecting some lightning storms. I got a unit uh, not cooling. Let's see if we can figure out what's going on. This one right here. Compressor doesn't seem like it's running. It is kind of hard to tell. I can't really hear it. I hear the fan. I don't hear a compressor. The line is hot. Yeah. Well, I'm full of disconnect and take a look here. Yeah, it definitely was just the fan running. Could be the units overheated. I'm not sure, it could just be the capacitor of the phase. All right, let's see. Okay, let's take a look here at the capacitor pool. And let's see what we got here. Okay, a little cooler. Good thing. It's still hot, it's like a sauna, but, but it's just not not nearly as bad. You can tell uh, by how many less air conditioners are running right now. Let's see what we have here. Ah, no hard start kit. My units just seem to benefit from a hard start kit. I'm gonna flat blade screwdriver back on. Okay. I'm going to show you the easiest way to remove. Welcome back to Kung Fu Maintenance. Well, I want to show you the easiest way to remove capacitor leads is to take your flat blade screwdriver. You want to, after you pull the disc, first pull the disconnect. And or turn off the breaker. discharge the capacitor, which is the Herm and the... Common. And the fan and then the easiest way to disconnect the leads is to slip your screwdriver underneath the leads and slip them off. I see a lot of people struggling with using a pair of pliers and pulling them up but this is definitely much much easier. So this one and there's so many places you can get under there to you know to disconnect the leads. And that does pretty much the least damage too to the terminals. It's loosening them and all. It works for removing terminals from the contactor as well. Works really good. Okay. Okay. So get my meter here and do a capacitor test. I believe this one's a 45. That means they like to swing the QWERTY around. And this one doesn't have a hard start yet. My units seem to survive much better. Yeah, it's 40 slash five. I definitely have one of those in my bag, but we're going to test it first. And we're going to go on the microfarad setting. And I'm going to go Herm. Common. And it should be 40. 3.72. That's a bad gap. And then common to fan. 4.83. Hence the fan working and not the not the compressor. Okay. So I got a new 40 slash 5. And I also I forgot to put a hard start kit in my bag. Darn it. 
Oh, got it, got it. I specifically went to restock my bag earlier. Well, I'm going to get this unit running for now, and then I'm going to come back and put the hard start kit in after. Right now, I don't have AC. Here's the fan, brown. And then the yellow is the herm wire that goes by itself. On Goodman units, that's the start wire that goes to the compressor. Different brands use different colors, but a lot of times you can tell the start wire to the compressor because it's the one that's on the herm on the capacitor. And if we add a hard start kit, generally the herm or start wire is all by itself unless a hard start kit has been added. We'll be putting one lead on herm and one lead on common. I've got to move my strap here. rotate it where the 40 slash 5 is visible. I like to write it in there for the next guy. Forty slash five. This makes it nice and clear. Now we'll plug it in and see if we start. And then I'll come back and add the hard start kit. That eases the load. So taking my disconnect, plugging that back in and Right Again, I'm going to come back and add the hard start kit, and it, that just makes my units work a little easier on the compressor. Hopefully, make the capacitor last a little bit longer. A lot of people don't agree with me on the whole hard start kit thing, but hey, that's uh, what works in my area for my units, and I just see a lot more longevity out of my units with the hard start kit. So. Grab one of those. I'm gonna search my bag. Oh, I got one. I was wrong. I had it the whole time. All right. So this we one lead to common and one lead to harm. Now we need to re-pull the unit. It's getting nice and cold, so that's good. So save myself some footwork, but not some time. But that's okay. Should have looked through my bag a little bit better. Okay, now I need to re-discharge the capacitor. The capacitor re-energizes itself and then it holds that charge like a battery. And it can bite you. It's uh, one of those things. I misplaced my screwdriver. Screwdriver's hiding. There it is. Okay, so discharge the capacitor. Bridge the leads from common to herm. Common to fan. Which is right here. Common to fan. Common to herm. And then the hard start kit just goes one lead to each side. So I usually put the one with a single post on it to the herm. And then the double post to the common. Our kit we can hang right here. Okay. Just 
rotating where the 40 slash 5 plus 5 is kind of visible. Make it easier. I did write it in there too, so that's sometimes the Sharpie fades. Alright, I'll put my camera back on so we can start to wait five minutes. saying too much here but what I was saying was I went through a lot of uh, 40 slash 5s a lot of capacitors this year and uh, actually that was my last 40 slash 5 uh, so I had some on order but that was my last one hopefully going to make it through compressor started right up fan motor started right up nice and quiet too Set there. Fan motor spinning the correct direction. The unit's getting nice and cold, and we're good to go. Thanks for watching. Come for maintenance. Over now. Stay safe out there. It's supposed to be a lightning storm on the way. Wonder if I'll get you any good footage of that. All right. Palm Springs day. Hey, hey, hey. Just in time. All right. Definitely had some crazy stuff happen in the past few days and going to be trying to share some of those videos with you, starting with the one I shared the other day, which was about how my best tips on unclogging air conditioner condensate lines and the preventative maintenance you can do to prevent things. But in that video, I shared my five plus best tips about, con you know, dealing with condensate drain clogs with from air conditioning and heading those things off. Hope you like this video, trying to share some of my best tips. Now these are steps that you can take to head things off. You know, preventative maintenance always puts the maintenance on your schedule and, and uh, by clearing these lines ahead of time, right ahead of the, the cooling season, uh, can help prevent a lot of these things from happening. Obviously you can't prevent everything, but if you head off the majority of it, it's going to save you a lot of time and effort later on and a lot of energy later on. That way you're not getting called off of everything else. You know, if you can do it ahead of time, preventative maintenance puts things on your schedule. Anyway, that's what Kung Fu Maintenance is all about, yeah. making life easier for you and sparing you as many headaches as possible. Thanks for watching, and I hope you subscribe. I hope you like the video. These past few yeah. days have been some crazy days. Hey, and I hope to be bringing you more videos uh, that happen these days. I had a compressor burnout. So that's cool. And then I had a unit that needed the disconnect yeah, changed out. So hopefully going to be showing you those videos and a little bit more how-to. Or a lot more how-to. And just sharing the experiences with you in the days to come. Thanks for watching. Tried everything. Below, you'll find links to the tools and some of the parts and tools and, and items used in the videos to help keep things running good. And maintain things how they should be. It looks like it's internal. Walking through this world like a film, rush, rush, rush.